The brain continuously handles enormous amounts of information. At the same time as it has to adapt to an ever-changing environment, it also needs to analyze the signals from the body and integrate all the current's thoughts and feelings into complex human behavior. With modern neuroscientific methods, the underlying neurobiology of these intricate processes have been studied. In this video, we will focus on the cognitive functions of the brain. So let's delve into the world of our higher order cognitive processing. A traditional way of organizing the brain functions is to group them into a few discrete functional domains. The list is quite intuitive. The motor domain, the sensory domain, emotion and cognition, which we will focus on in this video. In addition, some researchers discern a cognitive domain, including the basic drives and motivations and an homeostatic domain, which means the functions that sustain the biological equilibrium of the individual and the balance of their bodily functions. Under these four or six umbrellas, almost every brain function can be sorted. In this lecture, we will give you an overview of the basic cognitive functions and introduce you to the functional anatomy of cognition. Broadly speaking, there are three groups of cognitive functions, the memory systems, the perception and the executive functions. The memory systems makes us intelligent. Without memory, we would only be like a disconnected screen, registering what is going on without being able to compare it to anything, understanding it or remembering it when it leaves our sight. We wouldn't be able to learn or make predictions about the future. The architecture of our memory system contains different temporal elements reflecting the different stages of processing, working memory and long-term memory. Working memory is the cognitive system responsible for temporarily, seconds long, holding information online and available for processing. As such, it is important for any kind of reasoning or the guidance of decision-making and behavior. Thanks to working memory, we can focus on a mathematical problem, remember what the room looks like if the light goes off, or perhaps coordinate advanced movements in a dance. Working memory is also critical for the other cognitive skills that we will go through in this video perception and executive functions. Working memory can operate through existing neurons in already established neural networks. In contrast to long-term memory, it has a rather small capacity. Brain regions extensively associated with good working memory capacity are the frontal cortex and the parietal cortex. Long-term memory concerns storage of information during extended periods, hours, days and years. In contrast to working memory, long-term memory is commonly associated with changes on molecular levels in the brain, strengthening of synapses, creation of new synapses or new neurons, or configurations of old neural networks. Long-term memory is usually divided into two forms. Declarative memory, which is memory of such things that you can declare or tell others about. Mainly conscious memories or pieces of facts like Paris is the capital of France or where you were the first time you got kissed. Hippocampus is a critical structure in the brain for the declarative memories. Secondly, non-declarative memory is a form of long-term memory. It refers to learned motor or cognitive capacities such as riding a bike or reading. Anatomically, the memory of these abilities is associated with structures in the basal ganglia and cerebellum, preferentially. Other forms of non-declarative memories are subconscious processes such as uh, conditioning and uh, habituation. 
The perception system refers to our ability to reconstruct a neural representation, an inner version of the things that go on outside of the brain. Perception is a higher cognitive processing of the sensory inputs. With extraceptive perception, we automatically recreate the outer world. For example, we get an understanding of the three-dimensional characteristics of the room that we are in from visual input, sensory perceptions from the skin, joints and muscles. For this, the parieto-occipito-temporal association cortex is important. Here, information from different sensory inputs link together. With interoceptive perception, the brain monitors and analyzes the internal milieu of the own body, such as metabolic status, or body temperature, thirst and hunger. This basically makes us get an idea of how we feel inside. This type of information is processed primarily in the ventral, limbic or paralimbic brain regions, like the hypothalamus, insular cortex and the amygdala.